Currently, our API... Most APIs actually serve data. Ours doesn't. So in this video, we're gonna fix that problem. So in the previous part, we're kind of taking a look at how to split out the API routes using Express Router. But we're still not looking at the specifics of our API, which is the API for our quiz app. So that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. We're going to start building out the actual API that we need. So to do that, we're going to need some data. So in the original Angular quiz app tutorial, I just copy pasted the data into a data service that existed within the front end code and there was no API involved at all. And to start with this API, I'm going to paste it into another file that we can pull from and send it back to the clients via the API, which is a step along the right direction. And in another video, maybe the next one, we'll build an actual database using MongoDB put that data in there so we can actually be pulling the data out of a database. But for now, we're just going to hard code it by copying it into a file. So let's just create that file. I'll just call it data.js. And into here, I'll just paste all that data. And we can see here we've got the correct answers. We've got quiz questions. And down near the bottom, we have another array called turtles data. So right now we've just got the variables, so we're going to want to export them. So let's say module.exports equals this object, and here we'll say correct answers, quiz questions, and turtles data. So now we're exposing all of this data to the outside world. So now one thing that you may think of doing here is just going straight into your API, requiring in that data, and just sending it back to the client when it makes requests for it. And that would be fine, it would work. But something as a developer you're gonna to wanna to start thinking about is how can I structure things in a way that makes things easy as I start to add features? And what I mean by that is we're gonna add a feature in the next video potentially where we're gonna deal with a database. And databases are asynchronous in nature. We make a request to the database and then the database takes some time to fetch that data and then it passes it back. So it's gonna be done in an asynchronous manner, probably using promises. If you don't know what promises are, I'm definitely, definitely gonna do a very in-depth video on what promises are very soon. But for now, just know it's a way of handling asynchronous data. But if we were to just require in the variables from our data.js, that's synchronous. We're not using promises there. But if we know we're gonna be using promises in the very near future, we should probably be building things now with that information in mind. So even though we're not using a database now, I'm gonna create some model functions that use promises to return the data so that things don't have to change that much when we actually drop a real database into there. So we'll start off by creating a new directory called models and enter here we'll put in a facts.js and a questions.js so that's what we've got in our app we have the initial facts section where you can learn about the turtles and then there's the quiz section so those are going to be the way that we split up the models so we'll just open up this facts model and we're going to want to get hold of the data so this is where we can require in the data that we exported from the data.js. So let's say const turtles data equals require data. And then we can create a function get turtle data. And this will be the function that stubs out or simulates an asynchronous request to a database. And we'll do that using a promise. And there's a something on the promise object called promise.resolve. And what that does is resolves immediately. So it's just like a promise where you can call dot then, but instead of waiting time to do something or having some complex way of simulating that, we just immediately resolve it. So it happens instantaneously but the interface with which we deal with that is exactly the same as if it took 10 seconds. It, it, we just need to use the dot then method. So we can resolve 
that turtle's data. And now we have an interface with only a few extra lines of code that's much more future-proof when we do decide to use promises. So we just want to use this now, so we'll just export that. Module.exports get turtle data. So now that we have that, let's actually use that in an API route. So if we go into our API here, we can create a new route, router.get, and I'll call it just slash data. And then into here, we would usually put in our request, whatever that callback that we've seen so often. And this is just a personal preference thing. But what I actually like to do here is to just put in a named function and then declare it elsewhere instead of putting in an anonymous inline function. So it doesn't really make that much difference, but I like to do this where I say data handler and then down here actually declare data handler. And then into here we'll give it the same request and response objects that we've given it before. And I think doing it this way is just a bit cleaner so that when you first open the file, you can see a list of all of the routes that are declared. So we might have 20 of these just in a row and we can just at a glance see all of them without seeing the implementation of any of them. But if we do want to see the implementation, we can scroll down the file, see the function that implements it, and then take a deeper look. But for now, we'll just see this. And what we want to do here is get that data from our model function, the one that we just created. And when that resolves, which is obviously going to be immediately, but it, because it's a promise, it could take any amount of time, we want to then send that back to the user. So we want to get hold of that model function. So that's get turtle data. And we'll require that from models facts. Now we've got that, we can just call that get turtle data. And because this is a promise, we can then say dot then. That gives us some data. And then what do we want to do with that data? Of course, we want to send it back to the user. We've seen res.send. But that just sends raw data back. But we know that this data here is a JavaScript object that contains all of our facts. And because it's a JavaScript object, we want to send it back as JSON. And Express gives us a nice convenience method to do that, res.json. So we'll just pass it that data. And there you go. We're passing that data back. So if we come to the browser, we can take a look. So we have slash API slash data. So that's the route we've just declared. We go to there and here we go. We get a dump of JSON. One thing we can do just to make it look a bit prettier is to come into here and say app.set JSON spaces two. And that will just pretty print our JSON to the window. So it's slightly nicer to look at. But of course, all of this white space is unnecessary in a production application. We just want it now so that we can actually see what we're dealing with when we're developing. But probably don't want to have this app.set JSON spaces in a real production application. But it does show you this other method that exists on the Express app called set, which sets global properties on Express. It's kind of just tweaks configuration, I suppose you could think about it. And in this case, it tweaks the configuration of how many spaces to use when sending JSON back to the client. Defaults to zero, no white space at all. We can tell it to use two for our convenience here. So now that we have that route created, we want to create more and we want to create more model functions to use the rest of the data. So now let's just repeat that process by creating some model functions for the questions and the API routes that are responsible for serving them. So again, we're going to need to get hold of the data responsible for the questions. So we'll say const correct answers and quiz questions require those from data. And then we want to create get correct answers. So this is going to be the model function again that uses promise.resolve and we'll just resolve correct answers. And for this we'll say get quiz questions 
return promise dot resolve quiz questions just like before module dot exports equals get correct answers get quiz questions so this is stubbing out the model functions using promises again this time for questions and now we want to use that in our api so we will come down here router.get and we'll create another root we'll call it questions and we'll give that question handler and we'll just repeat for answers answers answer handler and we'll just declare those down here question handler give that request and response we'll create another one for answer so we want to require in those methods so we'll say get correct answers and get quiz questions require those in from models questions now we want to use those here so get quiz questions dot then just like we did before res.json data and then here get correct answers then data res.json data so there we go there's quite a bit of redundant typing there but hopefully that's kind of reinforcing the idea of what we're doing here that we're just calling these model functions that we've created intentionally to use promises even though we actually have the data synchronously feeding that back and then using res.json to send that back to the user so if we take a look in the browser we've got the slash api now we can go to slash uh, let's go to questions first and we have all of our questions nicely there and then we can go to dot answers and we have our answers array there so we're now serving that back to the user as they request it from the api so exactly what we want so that's all for this video so as always thumbs up subscribe bell all that jazz stuff you know youtube stuff and yeah i'll see you in the next video when we take a look at actually implementing all of this using a real mongodb database